Welcome to our continuing lecture in Rizal. In the previous lesson, we discussed the political structure of Spanish government and its settlement in the country for 333 years. While Cebu became the first seat of government for the Spaniards, Manila became the first or the center of commerce. Do you know why? When the Spaniards came to the Philippines, our ancestors were already trading with China, Japan, Thailand, India, Cambodia, etc. The Spanish government continued trade relations in Manila. The Spaniards closed the ports of Manila to all countries except Mexico. Thus, the manila Acapulco trade, better known as the Galleon trade, was born. The Galleon trade was a government monopoly. Only two galleons were used. One sailed from Acapulco to Manila while some 500,000 pesos worth of goods, spending 120 days at sea, the other sailed from Manila to Acapulco with some 250,000 pesos worth of goods, spending 90 days at sea. Do you know why Spanish government was not able to fully exploit our natural resources? It's because they were making a lot of money with Manila Acapulco Galleon. Today, we will talk about the secularization of the Catholic Church in the past. Remember that Rizal's novel, Noli Tangere was dedicated to the first three martyrs, the Gumbolza, who were tried for treason and sedition. What is this secularization controversy? Two kinds of priests served the Catholic Church in the Philippines. These were the regulars and the seculars. Regular priests belong to religious orders. Their main task was to spread Christianity. Examples were the Franciscans. Uh, recollects Spanish church in Cavite circa 1899. Dominicans and Augustinians as well. Secular priests did not belong to any religious order. They were trained specifically to run the parishes and were under the supervision of the bishops. Conflict began when the bishops insisted on visiting the parishes that were being run by regular priests. It was their duty, they argued, to check on this administration of these parishes. But the regular, the regular priests refused these visits, saying that they were not under the bishop's jurisdiction. They threatened to abandon their parishes if the bishops persisted. In 1774, Archbishop Basilio Santa Justa decided to uphold the diocese's authority over the parishes and accepted the resignations of the regular priests. He assigned regular priests to take their place. Since there were not enough seculars to fill all the vacancies, the Archbishop hastened the ordination of Filipino seculars. A royal decree was also issued on November 9, 1774, which provided for the secularization of all parishes for the transfer of parochial administration from the regular friars to the secular priests. The regulars resented and resented the move because they were they, they considered the Filipinos unfit for the priesthood. Among other reasons, they cited um, the Filipinos' brown skin, lack of education, and inadequate experience. The controversy became more intense when the Jesuits returned to the Philippines. They had been exiled from the country because of certain policies of the order that the Spanish authorities did not like. The issue soon took an, uh, it, it, it took a racial slant, so it became discriminatory. The Spaniards were clearly favoring their own regular priests over Filipino priests. Monsignor Pedro Pelaez, ecclesiastical governor of the church, sided with the Filipinos. Unfortunately, he died in an earthquake that destroyed the Manila Cathedral in 1863. After his death, other priests took his place in fighting for the secularization movement. Among them were fathers Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, and Jacinto Zamora, collectively known as Gumborza. On February 17, 1872, the Gumborza were executed by the Spanish colonizers on charges of subversion. The charges against them were their alleged complicity in the uprising of workers at the Cavite naval yard. Complicity meaning they were, they were, they were accused to be accomplished, accomplices, accomplices of the mutiny. 
The death of Bomborza awakened strong feelings of anger and resentment among the Filipinos. They questioned Spanish authorities and demanded reforms. The martyrdom of the three priests apparently helped to inspire the organization of the propaganda movement, which aimed to seek reforms and inform Spain of the abuses of its colonial government. Filipino nationalists in 1898 framed a constitution for an independent Philippine Republic. They were heated, there were heated discussions on the provisions on state and religion. Felipe Calderon presented his draft proposal call, calling for Catholicism to be made a state religion. According to Jesuit historian John Schumacher, Calderon then attacked the position of Apolinario Magdine, who insisted on the separation of church and state. The Calderon proposal, however, was defeated by a single vote, and the provision was finally passed. The Constitution of 1899 states in Article 5, the state recognizes the freedom and equality of all religions as well as the separation of church 